In this video, I do a first set of scientific tests on the sleep tracking accuracy of the Fitbit Charge 5. I'll compare the sleep tracking of the Charge 5 against two different EEG devices. I test it on myself for a total of 17 nights, and I'll also use the data from a second person from 14 nights. Finally, we'll also briefly look at how this compares to the previous generation, the Charge 4. As always, I do not want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. Hello everyone. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. I previously took a first look at several features of the Charge 5, including the sleep tracking accuracy. In this video, I'll look at the sleep tracking of the Charge 5 in more depth. I'll compare the Charge 5 against two different EEG devices, the ZMAX and the Dream 2 EEG headband. Both of these can measure your brain waves, which makes them perfect for tracking your sleep stages. In this video, I'll use about six times more data compared to the previous video. Specifically, I track my sleep for an additional 12 nights using the Dream 2 headband, and I'll also use 40 nights of data from one of my subscribers that also owns the Dream 2 headband and the Fibbit Charge 5. I'll start by giving you a short recap of the results based on the ZMAX EEG device. I can actually access the raw brainwave data from the ZMAX and score each part of the night for the different sleep stages. I tested the Charge 5 using this EEG device for two nights. First, let's look at the total percentage of each sleep stage the EEG device on the left and the Fibbit Charge 5 on the right predicted. As we can see, the Charge 5 predicts too much deep sleep and also too much awake time. As a consequence, it predicted too little light sleep. The total amount of REM sleep is roughly correct though. However, far more interesting is to see if it predicts the correct sleep stages at the right time. That is what is displayed here. On top we have the sleep stages according to the EEG device, and on the left the sleep stages according to the Fibbit Charge 5. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was recorded as each sleep stage by the Fibbit Charge 5. All the stages that are correctly predicted will be on the diagonal of this matrix, which I'll highlight in green as I'm explaining the results. First, looking at deep sleep, we see that almost all the deep sleep I had was also correctly predicted as being deep sleep. More than 90% was correctly predicted. If deep sleep was confused, it was confused with light sleep. However, the Fibbit does tend to predict too much deep sleep, and that is what is displayed in this example night right here. On top, you can see the sleep stages as they were recorded using the EEG device. Along the horizontal axis, we have the time of night, and on the vertical axis, we have the different sleep stages, that being deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep, and awake. On the bottom, you can see a similar plot, but now for the sleep stages as they were recorded by the Fibbit Charge 5. I marked the actual deep sleep here in purple, and as you can see, the Charge 5 basically got all of this correctly. However, later in the night, the Charge 5 predicted some extra deep sleep that was not really there. There. And we can basically see the same thing for this second example night right here. All of the deep sleep I had was correctly detected, however also some extra deep sleep was detected. Now back to the overview, we see that light sleep was also predicted decently, with more than 60% of what was light sleep also correctly predicted as being light sleep. If it was confused, it was mostly confused with deep sleep and REM sleep. REM sleep tracking was also pretty good with 66% of what was REM sleep also correctly predicted as being REM sleep. If it was confused, it was mostly confused with light sleep. But it was also sometimes confused with awake time. To see the sleep cycles, I added non-REM sleep in blue and marked REM sleep in red. Each sleep cycle starts with a combination of deep sleep and light sleep here in blue together called non-REM and always ends in REM. I would say that based on just the data from the Fibbit Charge 5, I would be able to see most of the sleep cycles for this night. It would only miss the first cycle. Now for this second night, we can actually see all the sleep cycles quite nicely. Where here we can see it's non-REM, then REM, non-REM, REM, non-REM, REM, non also based on the Fibbit data. Awake detection was also pretty good, with almost all of the awake time correctly detected. Let's put these results into perspective. How did they compare to some of the other devices I tested in the past? That is what is displayed right here. Now this graph contains a lot of information, so let me try to explain what you see. Along the horizontal axis, we have the average accuracy over the four individual sleep stages, that being deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep, and awake. On the vertical axis, we have the accuracy of the worst sleep stage. Now I added this since many devices compromise the accuracy of one sleep stage to benefit the accuracy of the others. Now the better a device, the more to the top right it is, and the best device would have 100% for both of the axes. As you can see, based on these metrics, the best devices are the different Fitbits. In this case, the Fitbit Sense, Inspire 2, Lux, and Charge 5, which all perform about equally well. These are quite closely followed by the Whoop Strap and the Withing Sleep Analyzer. So this shows that at least on me, currently the Fitbit algorithm seems to be the best one out there when it comes to sleep tracking. As I mentioned in the previous video, these results indicate that the sleep tracking of the Fitbit Charge 5 appears to be pretty good, as I've also seen for other Fitbit devices. 
Next, let's check if we get the same results based on a total of 50 nights using the Dream 2 EEG headband as a reference on myself. And after that, I'll check how it did on somebody else for 40 nights. Let's first look at the total percentage of each sleep stage again. On the left, we have the results for the EEG headband and on the right, the results for the Vivid Charge 5. Again, we see that the Fitbit Charge 5 predicted too much deep sleep and also too much awake time, similar to what we saw based on the other EEG device. However, based on the data from the Dream 2 headband, the amount of light sleep is roughly correct and the amount of REM sleep is too little. This slight inconsistency with the ZMAX could be due to several reasons. First of all, I have a larger amount of data for the Dream 2. I also noticed that the scoring algorithm of the Dream 2 tends to merge very close by REM segments, whereas if I score it myself based on the raw data, I tend to keep even close by REM segments separated by light sleep. However, the differences are not that big and I also think that the confusion matrix will be much more informative. That is what is displayed here. This is a similar plot to before but now with the Dream 2 headband as a reference. First, looking at deep sleep, we again see that most deep sleep detected with the EEG device was also predicted as being deep sleep by the Fitbit Charge 5. The little that was confused was mostly confused with light sleep. If we look at the individual nights similar to before, we indeed see that almost all of the deep sleep I had here in purple was also detected as being deep sleep by the Fitbit Charge 5. However, often the Fitbit detects some extra deep sleep, mostly later in the night as we can see here but also here. We see the same for the second example night right here where I detected all of my deep sleep but also some extra deep sleep here and also here at the end of the night. And this is true for most nights. It's not a lot of extra deep sleep but generally just a little bit which is also what we can see for this night right here. Light sleep was also detected quite well, with a little over 70% of what was light sleep also predicted as being light sleep by the Fibbit Charge 5. If it was confused, it was mostly confused with deep sleep and a little with REM sleep and awake time. REM sleep prediction also matched okay, with about 55% of what was REM sleep also marked as REM sleep by the Fibbit Charge 5. If REM sleep was predicted differently, it was mostly predicted as light sleep. As you can see for this example night, REM sleep matched pretty well in general. So for this night, it's almost perfect. However, as we can see in this night, it's sometimes misses some of my shorter REM segments, like this one right here. For this night, it was again almost spot on. However, here again, it missed a shorter REM segment in the beginning of my night. And this is also what we see for this night right here. It again missed a shorter REM segment at the beginning of my night. Awake detection matched quite well with about three fourths of what was awake time according to the Dream 2 headband also detected as awake time by the Fibbit Charge 5. If they did disagree, this was mostly awake time being predicted as light sleep, which makes sense since this is the closest stage to being awake. Now, one of the limitations of my testing is that generally all tests are just performed on me. It could be that some devices function particularly well or poorly on my physiology. Luckily, one of my subscribers, Max, owns both the Fibbit Charge 5 and the Dream 2 EEG headband, and he was kind enough to give me his permission to use his data in my video. He also has a blog, which I'll link below, where he does a lot of the same type of analysis that I do. It looks kind of old school, but it's definitely worth checking out if you're a geek about this kind of data like I am. For his data, we see there's a really good agreement between the Fibbit Charge 5 and the Dream 2 headband when it comes to the total percentage of each of the sleep stages. Now, this looks really promising. Now let's check if each of these stages was predicted at the right time. That is what we see here. Now for him, deep sleep prediction was still really good with about three quarters of what was deep sleep also correctly predicted as being deep sleep. If it was confused, it was mostly confused with light sleep. Light sleep had about the same accuracy, showing about a 78% match with the Dream 2 headband, being mostly confused with deep sleep and REM sleep. REM sleep detection also looks pretty good with a 72% match, with most of it that was confused being confused with light sleep. Finally, awake detection was pretty okay with 58% of the awake time of the Dream 2 headband also detected as awake time by the Charge 5. However, still some of it was confused with light sleep. So this is all looking really good, but how good is the Fibbit Charge 5 at detecting the moment you fall asleep and the moment you wake up? To test that, I'll take a look at all the data based on the Dream 2 EEG headband for both me and Max, since this includes most nights of data. That is what is displayed here. On the vertical axis, we have the dates of the nights that I tested the Fibbit Charge 5, and on the horizontal axis is the time difference between the EEG device and the Charge 5 for waking up in yellow and falling asleep in blue. So a positive number means it detected me as waking up or falling asleep later than in reality, and a negative number means it detected me as waking up or falling asleep earlier. As you can see, the Charge 5 was pretty accurate when it comes to detecting the moment I fell asleep and the moment I woke up. Over all these nights, the largest deviation was about 18 minutes, which is not bad at all. Now this is the same plot for Max's data, and as you can see, it shows mostly similar patterns. Just for two nights, there was a larger deviation here on the bottom. One moment that he fell asleep according to the Charge 5 was about an hour off, and another time he awoke was almost two hours off. However, given the total amount of nights I checked, this is not that bad at all. 
So far, all results point to the Fitbit Charge 5 being a reliable sleep tracker. However, is it any better than the other Fitbit models? Well, just based on previous tests I did, I do not expect so. Even the Fitbit Charge 2, so several generations ago, seems to have had good sleep tracking quality, about as good as the current Charge 5. However, let's quantify the accuracy of the Charge 4, so the previous Charge model compared to the Charge 5. Now personally, I haven't used the Charge 4 in a while, but luckily Max still did. In total, he shared 35 nights of data where he used both the Dream 2 and the Charge 4. Here you can see the results for the Charge 5 on the left and the Charge 4 on the right side by side. As you can see, both confusion matrices look more or less the same, showing roughly the same accuracy in both. They both show a roughly 75% accuracy in deep sleep tracking, a roughly 78% accuracy in light sleep tracking, REM sleep accuracy for both was around 70%, and awake time detection was maybe slightly different between both, but mostly the same. For the Fitbit Charge 5, we see an accuracy of 58%, and the Charge 4 of 50%. However, I suspect that this is random variation, and both perform about the same when it comes to sleep stage tracking. The Fitbit Charge 4 was also really accurate at detecting the moment he fell asleep and the moment he woke up. Almost every night was basically spot on, just for two nights it appears to have had some difficulty. For one night it had issues both detecting the moment he fell asleep and the moment he woke up, and for the other night the main problem was detecting the moment he woke up. All in all though, given the amount of nights tracked, I would still say this is quite good. To conclude, I would say that Fitbit Charge 5 is a good sleep tracker, as I've come to expect from Fitbits. If you want to track your sleep, it's definitely a device I would recommend. However, you could also get any other Fitbit device and it would likely also track your sleep correctly. So if you don't care about the color screen, you might as well get the Fitbit Charge 4 since it's likely much cheaper than the Fitbit Charge 5. Fitbit also has the Fitbit Lux, which is aimed more at women, which looks a bit more elegant. I'll be doing a review of the other features of the Charge 5 in the near future as well, so stay tuned for that video. In the meantime, consider watching some of my other videos, like my first video on the Charge 5. If you found this video informative, consider liking, subscribing and commenting. And finally, check out Max's blog, which I'll link below.